This time of year, we remember all those things we should be thankful for. Like family, our men and women in the military, and good friends. Welcome to Talk of the Town, everyone. This month marks the start of our eighth year on the show, so we try something different. A visit with the Army Reserve at one of the largest tri-military bases in the country. As Thanksgiving approaches, it's all about the food. So we visit the world's largest shop right in Broadheadsville for some holiday help. Plus, a craft that takes a disastrous <laughs> turn. But don't worry, it ends well. We talk turkey and find out one of our founding fathers wanted this Thanksgiving bird to be our national symbol. But first, Saturday, November 11th is Veterans Day, a day to honor all those who served in the United States Armed Forces. It's a day to thank veterans for their service. Kim and I have known one local veteran for almost 30 years. Retired Army Colonel George Duell was the principal of Palmerton High School when we started with News 13. George has served our country in so many ways, from his days in the Army, to his work in education, and in his latest mission as an Army Reserve Ambassador. So when he invited us to visit Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst in New Jersey, we jumped at the chance to see our soldiers getting some of the best training in the world. Primarily, it's a training facility for our reserve components. It does not do active duty training, such as basic training or initial entry training, but it's an opportunity for our reserve folks to keep their readiness levels to the peak, coming down here with using the latest sophisticated equipment and training, and as a result, their skill levels constantly increase because readiness is our major thrust. We started our day at a high-tech simulated weapons system. There are over a thousand scenarios and plenty of weapons. Army Reserve units from 13 states can train here. It definitely lets them put them into some scenarios that they might not ever be in. It gives them that edge, that competitive edge. It, it definitely is a, you know, saves us a lot of money and ammunition when you can come in here and do this all day and uh, get some good training before you go out to the field. But today, it was Kim and I getting the chance to fire M4s. Today, you'll be shooting some targets, some stationary targets with M4s, which are 5.56, five, and uh, just to, so you can feel the weight and see what it's like to, to shoot, and then we'll be able to visually see where, where you shot and uh, where you're at on target. <laughs> How well we did or not. What you might have missed or, or what you might have done. And, uh, <laughs> We're ready. I've never shot anything this big before. All right, come on, let him have it. So you want to aim right underneath his chin center mass. Whoa! Yeah. That's good. 13 hits. There's no good guys here. It's going to be terrorists okay, coming good. at us. Uh, they'll be running all over. They'll be shooting off the roof. So you're going to be in that either that standing or that kneel position. And, and you want to try to engage your target. So. Somebody's getting you. Right. Behind a trash can. He's right behind a trash can. All the weapons you see are actually true, real weapons, uh, other than they computerize them a little bit with some servos, some different optics in them, but it is a true weapon. So when a soldier comes in here and trains, they have the actual same sights, the same feel, the same weight, just everything other than the noise. That was so <laughs> that much was, harder. That, yeah, that was a lot harder. Well, especially, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't see them at first because I was watching through my sight. So uh, when you do this, do you? I use both eyes open. I was going to say, I, 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 I was my like eye opening eyes, I closing was like, eye. I have to keep opening it open. Eye, closing eye, I'm like, I think I got to open my eyes and look so, around. So again, it shows you it, the difference between how we go out and qualify at, at, at a pop up range to get yeah. your sights all adjusted and then come into a real time scenario. Readiness is key in every aspect of the military. The weapons are ready and training is top notch. How about the transportation? When you're in the military, no matter what the mission, you want to make sure the vehicles don't let you down. I uh, provide QAQC for the uh, mechanics that here at work here in the shop. I um, bring the vehicles in, I inspect them, troubleshoot them, and then on the way out, I make sure they're up to ARMA standards. 
It feels great, actually, uh, because you know you're supporting uh, soldiers, supporting the mission. We're both Army Reservists, so we know we're supporting our units also. So I guess it's a pretty important job because when you're out doing any kind of mission that the military has, the last thing you want to happen is for a vehicle to break down. Exactly. You don't want to. You want to make sure soldiers are safe and make sure they're always operational. Next, we watched as soldiers in the non-commissioned officers academy took part in a very realistic training session where they learn how to shoot, move, and communicate. Here at the academy, we have a mixture. We have active duty, we have joint component, we have reservists, we have National Guard from all over the country. We've been out here for approximately 36 hours and this will be the uh, very last thing that a student does to get evaluated so we can point out shortfalls and hopefully get them fixed for when they leave here. Every year, over a thousand soldiers come through the academy. Their final exercise today tests their basic leadership abilities to survive on the battlefield, in this case, an ambush. We, we reinforce the need for them to take what they've learned here, uh, the basic tenets of leadership attributes, take them back to their home unit and apply what they've learned here for future missions. One of the things that we try and do is to pull the inner character of the leader that we're developing. And we stress them out, we put them in stressful situations to elicit a response. And if the response is good, then we enhance it. If it's substandard, we fix it. So therefore, when they leave here, they're prepared to face the challenges on the battlefield. We teach professionalism, we teach discipline. Um, we have a lot of combat veterans that are instructors that bring their knowledge and experience and share it with the, the younger generation of soldier. I'm amazed at the young men and women. They are outstanding. E each generation seems to produce better people. Uh, and I would say, because we're an all-volunteer force, Nobody's there except they want to be there, and because of that, uh, that motivation, that drive, that desire is there, and they, they're just absolutely excellent, and, and we're so proud of them. We are all proud of our brave men and women in the military, and we thank all of them for their service. Next on Talk of the Town, we'll continue our visit of Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst and show you how our soldiers prepare for injuries in the field. We head back to Fort Dix, now known as Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst in New Jersey. Our tour of the Army Reserve Training Center takes us to meet soldiers focusing on the medical needs of our troops. They prepare for life and death situations in the field and beyond. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize that out of our total U.S. population, less than 1% serves in uniform. So less than 1% is protecting over 99% of our population. So that's some great people doing some great things for our country. More than 160,000 soldiers trained at the Tri-Service Joint Base this year. An important aspect of that training involves medical readiness. This huge warehouse is filled with medical support items our troops need for their missions. It's always important for us to have our equipment ready. Um, the soldiers use it, to, obviously, to train with, um, so it needs to be ready for them so that they can get proficient at their job. The facility also houses supplies that are part of the IRT program. That means innovative readiness training. Soldiers pack up medical supplies and head out to underserved communities across the country to provide medical assistance. Provides, you know, uh, real-world medical support through, well, for the communities. Um, that are underserved. So it's a joint program with, you know, Air Force, Navy, Marines that help out with the underserved communities by providing dental, optometry, sometimes veterinarian, and uh, some pharmacy aspects. But pretty much we just come together and provide medical support and services to the underserved communities. And that's a kind of a twofold thing because the neighborhood gets a service and as well as the soldiers again get 
get some hand, good hands-on training. And it's, it's kind of like a win-win. We had nine missions. We had one that was in Alaska, one in uh, Hawaii, one just came back from Missouri. Has any of your equipment been utilized recently with... We did get a phone call yesterday that a unit down in Puerto Rico is looking to pull their equipment so that it can be shipped down to Puerto Rico to help out with the efforts down there. From the equipment concentration site, we head to a state-of-the-art control room. From here, a team of instructors create medical simulation scenarios. We actually have a class here right now doing Combat Lifesaver, and they are the first lines in the field um, overseas treating their casualties. High-tech robotic mannequins are an important part of the training scenarios. So we have uh, different kinds of training aids here. We have our 3G wireless mannequins that have all the vital signs. They talk to you, they blink, they breathe, they have pulses, you can do IVs on them. So they're really used for our medical personnel, nurses, and our combat lifesaver to do a full assessment and see if they can find those signs and symptoms that the patient is presenting. Well, the big thing on the battlefield is, you know, people dying from blood loss, bleeding out, bleeding out. So they have to learn how to use their tourniquet effectively and quickly because they can lose all their blood and bleed out in a short amount of time, depending on how bad their wound is. The medical simulation training center is open to law enforcement as well as the military. Today, a SWAT team prepares for bloodshed. Please, please, please! What do you guys want? What do you guys want? You can have all the classroom training and be proficient by the book, but until you really do it and put your hands on the equipment and the supplies and have real patients here to, to treat, then you don't know how you're going to react in that scenario. As an Army Reserve Ambassador, George Duell is proud of all of the Pennsylvania Reservists. He encourages young people to consider joining the ranks. But typically they will sign up for eight years. Of that, they'll have initial basic training just like every soldier goes through. Then they'll go to their skills training, engineer, military police, signal, whatever it might be. Then they return to their unit and normally they will drill on one battle assembly or one weekend per month and two weeks annual training. Opportunities are abundant for education, for skill training. We have the best educated people in the Army Reserve. 75% of the doctorates are there, 50% of the masters, and all of our officers as a minimum have a bachelor's degree. We have so many skills that we send them to schooling. And then one thing that's really a plus is not only are they being prepared for wartime duty, but they bring those skill sets back to the community, and we call it leadership, but in business it's called management. So they're bringing this into the communities that they live in, and it's just a plus for everybody. And Pennsylvania, it's so important since we've got the fourth largest Army Reserve in the country. If you want to learn more about the U.S. Army Reserve, visit the website goarmy.com reserve. When Talk of the Town continues, it's all about the food, military style. You know we always do a food segment. Yes, we do. <laughs> so when we visited Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakers, the soldiers went above and beyond and asked if they could do the food segment too. Well, <laughs> lucky for us, meals ready to eat, otherwise known as MREs, are the easiest meal you'll ever prepare. But how do they taste? I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> well, we each got an MRE and Zach got one too. We decided we'd open them up and share. So Zach, put that thing on autopilot. You're not getting out of this. <laughs> Have a seat. All right. <laughs> warfighter recommended, warfighter tested, warfighter approved. Maybe we should open these up and, and see if we approve. Yes, yeah, see, if see we what we approve. got. Well, we have two different meals here today, right? Mine uh, is vegetable uh, lasagna. Wait, do you need to? Yeah, so is mine. Ah, uh, shoo! I thought 
You're gonna have to take physical training to open them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna feel like a weakling now. The two of you got yours open. <laughs> Wait, it's coming, yay! <laughs> How long do you think these last? Years. You got a lot of stuff here. Wait, what is Not yours? Chicken? Mine is chicken with garlic and herb seasonings. Baked snack crackers. So that's something I guess you can just yeah, wheat look at. snack blends. They look like Cheez Its. They taste like Cheez Its. Okay. I don't know how to cook my chicken. Operating instructions. Mine don't have any operating instructions. Do you have one of these big green guys? No. <laughs> Maybe yours doesn't have to be heated. Yummy. <laughs> Let's see what the pears look like. All right, I'm going to pour some pears out. Canned pears? I think it's something. Well, they're bagged pears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Would you like to try some pears? Yeah, we have to try some pears. They actually look pretty fresh considering where they came from. Tastes oh, like out. pears. Mm -hmm. Yep, not bad. Not bad. All right, here's the cashews. Oh, you got cashews? Yeah, I've got cashews. Nice. Oh, dusted. Oh, that's right oh. there. Jalapeno. Well, that's good. But they didn't give you a Tabasco sauce, did they? So they. <laughs> did <it that> way. <laughs> I guess they we might want to heat our entrees up. All right, let's well, do, how that. Do, you do that. This is a multi step thing. Remove MRE pouch from carton and save carton. Tear open top of bag, way up here, and place MRE pouch in bag with heater. How are you able to tear these open? Oh, I even have, have nails. nails. You would think I should be able to do this. <laughs> you don't go to PT every morning. <laughs> Here, give it a try. What does it say? You'll either prove how tear bad I am. Tear here open. Tear here open. Maybe I just didn't have a good <laughs> grasp of it. Who knows? So now we okay. need to position the heating pad and the pouch up above the lines at the bottom. So you need to slide it up just a little bit. And then we need to fill so it with glad water. you're reading all the directions. For the lines. So let's give this a try. This is do not overfill in big, bold block letters. All right, so you tell right. me how much. Uh, it's just a tiny little pour. Hold carton level until the heater feels warm, or until one minute elapses. And then so. we have to incline it on a rock for 10 to 15 minutes. A rock or something. <laughs> <laughs> so stuff it in. Maybe we should have done this outside. Maybe. <laughs> well, Marie, we don't have a rock at your kitchen table. But... Hold it level till it warms up about a minute. Do you feel it warming up? Mine's starting to get a little warm. OK. Yep, mine's getting warm. So we're going to eat mine cold. Won't be long for food. Let's find something we can prop these up on. Like a rock? <laughs> Maybe a bottle of wine? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring a bottle of wine over. No, you know what? It'll heat up the wine. It might, uh, here. I'll grab some spices and just make a little uh, MRE lean-to. Wow, look at that. It's, it's like a, a whole piece, piece of chicken. chicken. So should we make our drinks? Yeah, well, let's make uh, some hot beverages. Let's make our drinks where they're not hot. Are they? Mine's not hot. I don't think. Mine's a strawberry dairy shake powder. What is yours? Is it hot? Well, we have this hot beverage bag. Maybe you can drink it cold, or you can oh, somehow heat it see, up. See, I don't have a hot beverage bag. See, everything I'm doing is cold. Mm -hmm. Well, cold not chicken, which That's see, because you're somewhere in the world where it's really hot, so they're not figuring maybe. you would want it. You know how I said this might be the easiest meal you've ever prepared? <laughs> <laughs> you take it back? <laughs> you take it back. I'm thinking, give me some peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I'm assuming this zipper is pretty good, but maybe I should hold both sides. Uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder how many accidents there are like that out in the field. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Try not to spill it. That's kind of a banana taste to me. Mm, nice strawberry. It's pretty good. Yeah, kind of like a. It's pretty creamy. Protein shake kind of thing. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah, sure. I don't think I should cook. Okay, here we go. Vegetable lasagna about to join the pears. <laughs> 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 Smells like, you know, Chef Boyardee. Yeah. 
Mm. Not bad. Yeah, I like Chef Good. Boyardee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, Chef Boyardee with, you know, beans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, chicken time. I don't know. I don't know if my MRE just didn't have a heater in it or if you're supposed to eat it cold. Not bad. Mm-mm. Not bad. Oh, pound cake's good. Yeah, I like the pound cake. So if you're hosting Thanksgiving dinner this year, you probably don't want to serve MREs, unless, of course, you don't want to host next year. <laughs> <laughs> but all joking aside, these meals really aren't bad, and they're extremely nutritious, better than a lot of the fast food many people eat every day. Very true. We want to say a big thank you to all of our veterans and the men and women currently serving in the military. We appreciate your service. Thank Thank you. you. It's always fun to do a craft with a friend. I don't think I would do crafts if it wasn't for you. (laughs) probably wouldn't do them if it wasn't for you either. (laughs) So we scoured the internet to come up with the perfect craft for this time of year. And guess what? We found one. (laughs) Leaves. Leaves. Now you can use outdoor leaves if you want, you know, real Real ones, real leaves. (laughs) Or you can use the fake ones. That have glitter in them. Yeah, sparkles, like the brightest of reds. So we're using the fake ones. And what we're making is a candle that just starts with a mason jar. Mm-hmm. So it's like two ninety nine. dollars Okay. Not and this bad. was a buck. It's a nice candle. Make sure it fits inside your mason jar. Um, that was at the dollar store. <laughs> you need some Mod Podge, some leaves. And if you don't want to pick up a bag for a buck at the dollar store, you can, you know, go outside, go outside and get some. Great idea for you and the kids. And then some twine that I didn't have to buy at all because, Marie, you had it here. (laughs) Uh, Lots of twine. (laughs) So all you do is you take a sponge brush. According to the internet, sponge brushes are the way to go when using Mod Podge. And you just paint your jar. Paint your jar with the Mod Podge. The whole thing? You're going to do the whole jar? The whole jar. At least the sides of the whole jar. Yeah. I guess we don't have to do the inside, right? No, or the bottom. <laughs> now this is the first time that we've done this idea. So we well, like to We never practice. <laughs> we like to succeed or fail <laughs> with all of you. We never know which it's going to be. Okay, and you're supposed to let it sit for a minute or two till it gets kind of tacky. Because I guess that helps the leaves stay on better. Okay. So get tacky. They're kind of tacky. Okay. We could always add more if we need to, right? That's true. Yes. And you may need to. They say sometimes you do. At least that's, you know, the internet. <laughs> okay. So far, so good. I have one on. <laughs> In addition, they said on the internet that you may want to iron them flat, especially if if they're starting to stand up, I, I think we need to mod yeah, podge so them I in kind place. Yeah, I feel like I need to seal them in. <laughs> Zach's laughing at us already, folks. So we got Jackson Pollock here with the, the glue. <laughs> Marie's just splashing it everywhere. I'm just going right over the whole darn thing. And it still doesn't feel like enough. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the hot glue gun? <laughs> okay, folks, Murray came up with a plan that they didn't have <laughs> that they didn't have on the internet. Heck on the internet. <laughs> Although I think we need a hair dryer too, because I think we need to dry it a little bit faster. So are you cooking for Thanksgiving? Um nope. Oh. Probably just a side dish or something to take to my sister's. She's cooking. I made MREs last year. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were smart. <laughs> um, Marie? Yes? <laughs> I'm not 
not sure what I think of this. I don't think it's really working. It's really high maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pain in the you know what. <laughs> you know what? I think we abandon this and uh, we bring our favorite tool to the rescue. Dun, dun, dun. All right, start Blue over. Blue guns. Take two. <laughs> Take right. two. I can already tell this is going to be so much better. So much easier. Okay, there was a thing online that said if if the Mod Podge <laughs> wasn't working, you could go with glue guns. I think. Oh, look at how nice that stuck right away. <laughs> a good bet. The only thing we'll have to do is when we're done, destring it. Yeah, destring. Because you know you have those little stringies. Mm -hmm. Why did I? <laughs> Why did we ever try something other than a glue gun? I don't know. <laughs> well, Kim, I think that was the best decision of the day. <laughs> this looks so much better. So much better. <laughs> okay, so now, voila. You need some twine. Oh, right. Marie, I don't know how much twine you would like. Right. Here's some scissors. But what you're going to do with the twine is just kind of wrap it around the top and then just tie it off. Only one thing left to do, add some candles to the middle. <laughs> yeah, I'll hold no it for you. Yay, I figured it out. <laughs> Having trouble with the candle lighter. Ooh, I like them. Yes, very nice. Our hot glue guns really saved the day. Yes, they did, because this is what our Mod Podge creations look like when they dry. It probably would have been okay if we kept going for three more days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the hot glue guns were so much easier. <laughs> Absolutely. When Talk of the Town continues, we head to the world's largest shop right to visit one of our favorite chefs. When you think about your holiday meal, are you completely overwhelmed thinking, what am I going to make? If you don't have a plan, you could just wander aimlessly through all the aisles. But if you're at Kinsley ShopRite in Broadheadsville, why not just ask their chef? Chef, chef John, John, help! Okay, ladies, I'm here to help. Don't get stressed out. We can do this. It's going to be perfect. <laughs> Thank don't you. Worry. Don't worry, but I got you. If you don't have a game plan, just come into the world. So I just shop right here, Kinsley Shop Right. We have a lot of great items that you will be able to throw something together. And you can always come and use the chef, and I'll come over and help you, you know, try and put together a meal or whatever sides. Chef, it's all about the Thanksgiving side dishes. So what are we making? Okay, well, today I think we're going to do a nice... Uh, succotash and the mm. really reason why I really like that dish is because it goes good either hot or cold. All right, we're gonna start off. I'm gonna get Marie involved because I don't see her wearing any band aids, so no I think she's probably good at, <laughs> at cut, cutting corn. <laughs> cutting corn. And Kim, you're just gonna cut those in half. Throw in some at Zach. Yeah, Zach, did you want that or I'm gonna eat that? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We got, we, got one. we got one for you, Zach. There you go. <laughs> I love working with Marie because she's left-handed and I can just like be right <laughs> in there. I don't have to worry about right. anything. Elbows yeah. with me. <laughs> I'm just going to start smashing pots around and stuff back there so I feel like I'm being useful. <laughs> that you're doing yeah. something. <laughs> you getting out camera back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Total utilization of product. Look oh, at that, Marie. Yeah, you Total kidding? utilization. My Good. dad Good would job. have always make me keep on eating the corn oh, on the cob goodness. if there was any kernels left. Those are amazing. Oh, I know. I can cut. You are totally awesome. Okay. <laughs> so the next thing I want you to do is we're going to take this jalapeno like that, and then we're going to go again. Okay. okay. We're going to go one more time, and then we're just going to take those... The seeds, the seeds right out of the middle? The seeds right out of the middle. Boom. Okay? That's the hot part. That's where all the heat is. <laughs> so you're taking it all out? Oh, yeah, yeah. Marie, Marie likes to leave it all in. <laughs> Am I chopping yeah, these? Yeah, just chop them just small? like that. Small? Small, I mean, yeah, small. Depends on what your interpretation of small is, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have Marie show off her knife skills with chiffonade. 
<laughs> wow, you know Chiffonade. how to chiffonade, right? No. Okay. I've never even heard of that. New. Oh, this is a this is a totally classic knife cut, a chiffonade. Okay. You stack your leaves. Okay, stack like a few leaves like that. Okay. okay. Stack our spinach. Roll them up. Oh. And this is actually basil, yes. but it will work oh, with spinach basil. too. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to roll it up like that, and then you're going to make really thin, can you see what I'm doing here? Yes, I do. You're going to make really thin cuts. Got my little roll. Chiffonade, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's chiffonade. called chiffonade. Don't ask me to spell it because I didn't know there was going to be a test today. Or <laughs> and I'm coming from the opposite direction that you came from. That's right. Still looks good. pretty good, Ray. Only an expert can tell the difference between a left hand and a right hand. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Zach, I love you. I love you, man. And one last thing we have to do is the avocado. If I remember this correctly, we cut around oh. and then twist. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't even nice. have to twist. Right now avocado. I need a spoon. Where's my spoon? Bam. There you go. <laughs> but first we're going to score it. Take your time. Then you're going to turn it towards like a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. and cut again. So once you scoop, you have little pieces. Right. Okay, and then okay. scoop gently yep. so we keep it that way, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have, don't, don't get too freaked out because we're going to, everything's going to get You're going to eat together. it. You're just it's going to go in right your in belly. There. Yeah. Now, all we're going to do is make a quick vinaigrette. Now, remember, the ratio for a vinaigrette is three parts oil, one part vinegar, but really just make it taste good. And you're going to drizzle some honey in there. I so, was wondering what that was. Right. Okay. So let's just... Dump everything. Well, that's not such a <laughs> that's not such a pleasant word. Let's just combine. place everything. We're combine. combine. Yeah, each let's do that. Yeah. So this is corn, avocado, and basil, pepper, and tomato. Yeah, just that half you... of that. Half of ah, what? Ah. I got you again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Only half. What? He's teasing okay. it. All going in. Yep. Uh, he everything just was waiting until I was already dumping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Some lima, beans. lima beans, and then we got green beans. Green beans, yep. Only half? No. <laughs> <laughs> now that only half. Seriously? No, this no, is right I was say. You guys are such easy bread. Oh, I know, easy right? Break. Um, red onions that you chopped up very nicely, by the way, Thank Chef. Thank you. Thank you for doing that before we got here. <laughs> yeah, I figured you know, I want to be crying we about it. Yeah, that's the, the Nobody no crying on good. TV. Yeah, it's like no crying in baseball, yeah, no crying in the kitchen. Okay, that's good. That's excellent. That's excellent. Okay. No, they're going everywhere. Right. Okay, we're going to see how Kim it. does it. Let's oh, go. Lord. Kim. I wanted to see you do it. Yeah, right. we're going to see him do it now. All right, you're out of practice. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. good. That was excellent. He's like, taking it away guys. from us so All right, fast. So He's we're going like, to just. Oh, yeah, look yeah. at that. All right. That takes like practice. That, that does okay. take practice. And then we I just like go to break up a little that's bit. Yeah, get your hands all in there. That's more my style. Are we ready? Yeah, go ahead. Only half. Right, <laughs> Only half. <laughs> All right. Okay, now you're going, I'm going to be saddled with that for the rest of the year. You know what? And you can make this like the day ahead maybe for oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it's Probably sits then overnight, it just like sits, yeah, it gets more flavors, flavors they right? They marry together. Mmm. Wow. You're looking surprised. I'm a little insulted over here. <laughs> I don't oh, know wow. what I was expecting, it but it's good. fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would make that in a heartbeat. We're going to take a break, but you're going to come back a little later in the show, and you've got another dish for us, right? Yeah, for the vegetarians and all of us. Okay. okay. <laughs> This month, we celebrate our veterans and recognize our national symbol, the bald eagle. But did you know that one of our founding fathers thought that bald eagles were lazy and cowardly? Ben Franklin wanted our national bird to be Tom the Turkey. After the bald eagle was selected as the symbol of the United States by the Second Continental Congress in 1782, Ben Franklin wrote a letter of, of his displeasure to his daughter who was in France. He wrote in the letter, uh, I protested the selection of the bald eagle because the bald eagle is a bird of poor moral character, thieving and marauding bird. And the fact of the matter is he's correct. Um, bald eagles will most often sit and wait for something else to catch food, uh, osprey in particular. Um, the osprey are fantastic at catching fish, so they'll swoop down, take a fish, and think they're taking it home to their nest, and the bald eagle will swoop on the osprey. Uh, the osprey, being a much, more, a much more of a pacifist, just lets the fish go. 
and the eagle swoops down, takes it home to his family and says, look here, look honey and kids, look what I brought home. That's right. <laughs> so he didn't want our country to be represented um, by a bird who would thieve and steal from other birds. We eat turkey on Thanksgiving. We do. And it dates back all the way to the pilgrims? Some people who are real history aficionados and, and really kind of know what went on back there say that it's possible that the turkey actually wasn't eaten on the first Thanksgiving. Um, there certainly were turkeys here in the 1600s, but they're, they're very elusive and they're very hard to hunt. You ask any turkey hunter, um, they're one of the hardest birds to, to catch. Um, so it's possible that they weren't even taken. The actual story is that there was a party of five men set out on a fowling expedition. Um, now what fowling would be, would be find something that flies and kill it and we're gonna eat it. Uh, could have included duck, goose, swan, um, but there wasn't really any official mention of turkey uh, in that, in that uh, anecdote from the first Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving was a holiday that was, that was created by a woman who wanted to have a fall festival. They wanted to have a national holiday that, that um, revolved around uh, bounty and the United States and, and having people have uh, good fortune and turkey was a, a wonderful thing to have and it all, you really only ate it on special occasions at the time um, but then it, it became a national holiday after that. Tell us about Tom the turkey. Here in the United States, they were very, very plentiful. Um, when, when colonists settled and, and pilgrims came and so forth, uh, these birds were everywhere. Um, they weren't really afraid of people. They, they flocked in large flocks of sometimes 100 birds or more. Um, I guess that made them fairly easy to shoot at the same time. Uh, there were no regulations. On, on these birds and then as more and more people came in uh, everybody needed to eat so they were fairly at that time they were a fairly easy game uh, so because of over hunting and then there was also market hunting which is some of the some of the higher class people who came in uh, they didn't want to go hunting so they wanted to buy it there were meat markets and there were butcher shops and things like that so then those people would pay hunters to bring them in uh, and the, the bird was almost extirpated from the state of Pennsylvania almost completely wiped out um, just from over hunting. Another thing that was an issue with the loss of turkeys is um, logging and foresting. Turkeys use those areas, uh, wooded areas, as a, a place to hide. And farming, large-scale farming, not, you know, Joe Farmer feeding his family, but large-scale um, commercial farms. They wiped out these, these wooded areas to put farmland in, and these birds lost their territory, lost their place where they needed to be. The Pennsylvania Game Commission did a lot to bring the turkey back and today things are a lot better. The PA Game Commission brought these birds back um, on, by two programs. They had a captive breeding program where they bred uh, wild turkeys, which makes no sense, captive wild turkeys, <laughs> but, uh, but they bred these birds and then put them back out. Um, 50 years they did that. They did that from about 1930 to 1970 ish. Uh, they did that. Um, but then they also began a capture and relocation program and they did that for about 15 years. After they realized the success of the capture and relocation program, they stopped the captive breeding program altogether. Uh, it was far more successful. In 15 years, they ended up with more birds on the ground here in Pennsylvania than after 50 years of doing it the other way. So it was, it was better because these birds knew what was going on. Um, they, weren't, they weren't raised in a pen. Uh, they really were wild, so they just moved them from one location to another and they just continued to breed and do well. I still get uh, adults and, and of course kids who no longer play outdoors come to me and say, I never saw a turkey. I never saw a turkey in the woods. I never saw a turkey in the wild. Well, part of the problem is they aren't getting outside, but they're, they are still kind of rare. They're still, we're, we're taking a lot of the wild areas where they used to live and we're building developments and we're building schools and malls and things like that. So they are gonna be pushed out of the area a little bit too. But I, I say if you do see them, enjoy them. They're really cool birds to watch. Um, they, they do hang in groups. Uh, they're kind of interesting to, to see what they do and a lot of, some of the things that people don't realize that they can do is fly. Um, they're not like big chickens that can't get off the ground. They're very powerful flyers, not far distances, a um, couple of hundred yards max, but they have been known, depending on the terrain, to cover a mile in the air. Uh, and they can fly up to 55 miles an hour. So it's kind of neat to see them go. Um, they can run a maximum speed of about 20 miles an hour. So, it's, so they're not slow. No, they're not. They're not slow. They're not dumb. They're actually quite intelligent and they're, and they're very wary of things. Turkeys, particularly the males, um, they have a, a bare head and neck 
and when they get excited, if you will, or, or they show an emotion, they can change their color very quickly. And sometimes it's also for um, the attraction of females. Um, the brighter color, you know, the blood kind of gets up in there and they, and they kind of strut and show off uh, and they, they throw their tail feathers up. And it's only the males that do that. They, only the males will fan their tails. Um, so, but that's the reason for that, it's just to attract the females. It's always us, you know, making a big Showing show. Showing off. Well, it's not us. It's the, it's the males of most of the birds that are doing all the work. Uh, <laughs> in the human species, it's usually the ladies that are doing all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Something went wrong Cause there. Because we're, well, cause we're lazy, you know. Right? You're so, like the bald eagles? Mm, Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so do you agree with Ben Franklin as far as his assessment as to whether he should be the national bird? I don't know. Um, I mean... In his disdain for eagles, yes, I agree with that. But my concern is if the turkey were the symbol of our country, what would we eat for Thanksgiving? <laughs> so so I true. I don't know, you know. I'm kind of and fond of turkey for that reason. Yeah, so I'm yeah. with you. A big thanks to Franklin Clock at the Carbon County Environmental Education Center for talking turkey with us. The public is invited to stop by the Environmental Center weekdays from 8.30 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. The beautiful bald eagle we met briefly in this segment is named Rennie. She was injured 17 years ago and has been happily living at the center ever since. When you stop by the Carbon County Environmental Education Center, make sure you say hi to Rennie and several other raptors that now call the Summit Hill Sanctuary their home. When Talk of the Town continues, we head back to the world's largest shop right for a vegetarian dish perfect for your Thanksgiving dinner. We are back at Kinsley ShopRite in Broadheadsville with Chef John, and we have a recipe now for our vegetarian friends. Or for anybody who loves vegetables. Yeah. And do you know what? Cheese! Cheese! Yes. cheese, yeah. cheese. Lots of cheese. Thank okay. you. Because yes. I do love my cheese. Oh, yeah. Cheese is amazing. <laughs> One of the oldest foods known to man, actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Besides yep. Brontosaurus burgers, but that's a whole nother ball game. I never All had right, so. one of those. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So um, we're going to put together this. Uh, it's called a portobello schnitzel. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get these great, beautiful portobellas. You know, you can get them any size, um, but we're going to clean these up. And we're going to take that stem there and just pull that out. See how it just snaps? Yeah. Go ahead, grab one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just snaps out. Now these gills in there, and mm -hmm. I, I got to tell you, that doesn't sound very appetizing at all when you have gills of any type, <laughs> right? No. So, uh, so we're just going to take, wrong. this is a really easy way of cleaning the grills. You're just going to get in there and you're just going to scrape. Oh, I've never okay. done this before either. Yeah, just I always the eat the gills, apparently. Ew! <laughs> gross! Kim's I, gross. That's <laughs> gross. You know what else? I eat the stems, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, you don't have to do this, but I do it anyway. I just grab a little end and I peel them. See how that Oh, it looks off? pretty. Yeah. This is a fancy mushroom. Yeah. Wow, Kim, you're the best mushroom peeler ever. Thanks. <laughs> Good. There's a fungus nice. among uh, us. Oh, <laughs> corn ball, oh. but I like it. Corn was the last segment. <laughs> oh, God. You're on a roll now. So that's why she took center stage. You see how she just pushed me yeah, out of the way? Yeah, she pushed you out of the yeah. way. And she needed, knew what she was doing. I needed the garbage she, bin. She set me out. Okay, we'll go with the garbage <laughs> bin thing now. All right, so this is Brie, all right? Yum, thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful, yes. Yeah. Brie, one of my favorite cheeses of all time. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. This is sour cream, okay, sour and you all have all the ratios in with the, um, the, recipe, the recipe, which yeah. will be on our Facebook page. Okay. What's this okay. one? That's Gruyere. Do not leave out the Gruyere. Make sure you get that in there. That has this beautiful nutty flavor to it. Yeah. You want to take well. a little taste? Oh, yeah. You can, yeah. yeah. That's you want to taste? Yeah. I was going to say, are you offering me a taste of cheese? Yeah. Zach? Mm -hmm. A little mm -hmm. taste of the gruyere. Oh, year. that's great cheese. Yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorites. Next to brie. Okay. That's wonderful. That's great. Then really, you have only some... need that much. Why didn't that's you bring it. us some more? Oh well, I can just <laughs> reach under here and get more. I can do that. I can make no, it happen. That's okay. All right. That's okay. okay. <laughs> and there's some grated uh, Parmesan cheese. Okay. Yep. So those are our cheese components. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we're going to add some raw onion. A lot of times I like to saute the onion, but this recipe calls for it to be raw. Okay. We're just going to put it in there. I'm not going to use all of it, though. Really? Yeah, no, uh -huh. this time I'm not going to use all of it. <laughs> not going to fake you us. out. Yeah, right? And um, 
And then we have some minced garlic. Garlic, yeah, okay. that looks good. And so. believe it or not, we're going to have a little bit of paprika, paprika in there. Yeah, to okay. give it a little color. Yeah, and a little flavor too, a little smokiness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the salt and pepper. Now we're just going to like mold that right into the bottom of the portobellas. What do you mean by mold? Just slap it in there. Come on. Yeah, We're not standing on it. ceremony here. More than that? Yeah. Oh, all right. You'll thank me later. Nice. Perfect. So you're going to set up what they call a three-stage breading station. Okay. So, so you have flour. flour. You have eggs that you just whip up real good. Okay. Then you have panko breadcrumbs. And I've added a little parsley and a little salt and pepper. Right in. Then it's like one hand wet, one hand dry, so we're going to do that. Then we're going to throw it in there, get some breadcrumbs on it. And try not to smash it down too much because you don't want it to... Uh... And then we're actually going to go one more time with this. Uh -huh. Wow. So here we go. Okay. Just take your time. I'll come behind you. All right. Coming back. Okay. I lost some of it. That's okay. It's all <laughs> going to be good. <laughs> all right. So now, with this step, we have some um, oil heated up on the okay. burners. Be careful using oil. Mm -hmm. And just take your time with this. It's going to be kind of like a gentle thing, like straight in. Ah. Okay. And we're not going to leave. Them, <laughs> we're not going to leave them in too long because we're going this one's to. This one too. Yeah. We're going to finish them in the oven, but we're just going to give it some nice crispiness on the outside there. That cheese is starting to melt. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> looking good. Oh, that's wonderful. You're looking for that perfect golden brown. Perfection. Beautiful. Great. Right. Now, how yeah. long do we have to toast them in the we're oven? We're going to toast these. We're going to actually put them in for about 15 minutes. Oh, oh that's wow. Good. Forget about it. <laughs> look Yay, at it. serve them uh -huh. up. These look absolutely amazing. They do, and so cheesy, I cannot <laughs> wait. I love the different textures. You have the creaminess of the brie and the gruyere, and then the crunchiness of the panko. You gotta be careful, because hot cheese can be really hot. Yes, take your time. Mm. Okay. This is spectacular. Mm -hmm. Wow. Here's your chance to shop at Kinsley's with a $50 gift card. Just find the proper photo in our November album and tell us your favorite part of this segment for a chance to win. Good luck. Not just Thanksgiving, we got Christmas, we got Halloween, we got Arbor Day, we have Groundhog's Day, we got the whole nine yards. <laughs> Some for everybody for all doing the, the whole year. Chef John, you really outdid yourself this time. Thank, Thank you, you, Kim. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Marie. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving cooking, everyone. And whatever you do, be the, the talk, talk of, of the, the town. town. I would have bet a million dollars. <laughs> oh, quick, take a picture, take a picture. <laughs> hand it to me, hello, hand it to me. <laughs> hello, little guy. You would better not poop see? on my camera. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>